Let's talk about adults-only all-inclusive resorts. I'm Angie Lusk, a travel agent specializing in all-inclusive vacations in Mexico and the Caribbean. Tonight, we're going to cover the top 10 considerations when choosing an adults-only all-inclusive resort. If you watched the family all-inclusive resort, you're going to want to skip to point number six. So number one, when's the best time to go? Number two, where do you want to go? How far is the resort from the airport? What's the beach like? What's dining like? What activities are there? What the vibe is like? How the room setup may impact your trip? What the different room location categories mean? And if Wi-Fi is a big concern. So when do you want to go? For most of the Caribbean, hurricane season is going to be a concern. January and February start out a little chilly. March to May are gorgeous. June and July is the beginning of hurricane season, so it's going to be hot and starting to be rainy. August and September are very hot and very rainy. October, again, still pretty hot and rainy, and then November and December are beautiful. The exceptions to this rule are the ABC Islands because they are outside the hurricane belt just off the coast of Venezuela. You won't see the rain, but you will see wind. So, where are you going to pick? You can see here I placed orange arrows at Mexico, Jamaica, and the Dominican Republic. These three islands are the most popular destinations for all-inclusive resorts. As you're considering what country to visit, one thing you want to keep in mind are what are the flight routes from your home. It's really nice to have a non-stop flight, especially if you're only going for a few days. You want to think about what activities are available. Do you want to go paddle boarding? Well, you want to make sure you're going to an area that has calm water near the beach. Do you love history? Then you're going to want to pick Riviera Maya to go see the Mayan ruins. Also, you want to keep in mind how many resorts are there. Does that give you a crowded feel? So for instance, in the Cancun hotel zone where it's high rise resort next to high rise resort, is that the kind of feel you want? Or do you want something more off the beaten path like the Explorian Resort in Cozumel, Mexico? Also, the number of resorts is going to impact pricing. The more competition, the lower the price. That's why a lot of the resorts with the best price points are going to be in Mexico, Dominican Republic, and Jamaica. Weather is going to have a big impact on your decision. If you're traveling in August, September, or October, you may want to head to Aruba so you don't have to worry about the hurricanes. You also want to think about the distance from the airport as you think about what resort you want to pick. Again, especially if you're going for a shorter trip. Here you can see I put a red arrow at Montego Bay and a purple arrow at Negril. Montego Bay, Jamaica is the airport most people fly into for their all-inclusive vacation. Negril is an hour and a half to two hours from the airport. So imagine if you've already had a very long travel day, potentially on a flight with a stop somewhere, you get to the airport and you still have two hours to go. For some people, that's an absolute deal breaker. You also want to think about the beach. All beaches are not created equal throughout Mexico and the Caribbean. On the left, you have a picture from Hyatt Zalora in the Cancun Hotel Zone. On the right, you have a picture from El Dorado Royale, which is down in Riviera Maya. Very different beaches. The Royale Beach isn't this wide. It's rocky. They're building an artificial reef to help stop the erosion. On the left, you have the crystal clear water and the beautiful wide beach. So depending on how important the beach is to you, that's gonna be a main concern as you think about what type of adults only all-inclusive resort is best for you. The other piece is dining. How important is dining to you? A lot of the resorts will have a la carte restaurants, meaning this is a resort where you go in, you get a menu, you order, it comes to your table, or buffets. Reservations can be required at some of the resorts. Other resorts have gone to no reservations required. It can be difficult at some restaurants to get a group together, depending on the size of the restaurant. Another thing that may be important is, is there easy dining from the pool? When we were at Hyatt Zolara, they had a little taco stand that would come out in the afternoon so you could eat in your bathing suit. At El Dorado Royale, it's a little bit harder to find places to eat in your bathing suit. What kind of spirits, wine, and beer do they have? 
One note, on a lot of websites, you'll see the phrase domestic beer and spirits. Keep in mind, this means domestic to that country. So some people think they can show up in Mexico, go to one of the value adults only resorts where it said domestic beer and spirits and find Bud Light. You can't. It's going to be all Mexican beer and Mexican spirits. The other thing to keep in mind when looking at adults only properties is some of them are next door to family properties and share the restaurants. So for instance, Hideaway at Royalton Riviera Maya, Hyatt Zolaro Rose Hall in Montego Bay, a lot of the restaurants are on the family side of the property. So while you're technically staying at an adults only resort, your meals may have kids around. Big important thing to consider. And that's a picture of uh, my sushi roll at Hyatt Zolara. Activities. What do you want to do when you're there? I know some people can spend the entire time in a lounge chair with their book and their Kindle. Other people, the idea of spending all their time hanging out by the pool or the beach just makes them twitchy. So here's a picture of Sandals Grand Antigua, a beautiful property. Sandals includes a lot of activities, including scuba diving, snorkeling, sailing, paddle boards, kayak, and then also pool activities. You'll find bingo, beach volleyball, pool volleyball, wine tasting, cocktail making classes, cooking classes, a casino night. So depending on how active you want to be, you really want to figure out which is going to be the right fit. Some resorts now have foam parties certain days of the week where they pump foam into the main pool. Like sandals, the non-motorized water sports are included at a lot of places. You have evening shows. Here on the right, you see a picture outside at Secrets wild orchid near Montego Bay, Jamaica, where there's a band playing in open air overlooking the water and across the water, there's a little hillside town. Absolutely beautiful. And nightlife. Don't assume that every adults only all-inclusive resort that claims to have a disco actually has an active nightlife. One of the best resorts I've ever been to for an active nightlife is Breathless Riviera Cancun. It is so much fun. They have flair bartenders holding down the bar just outside the lobby. They have a really fun evening show. And then they have a disco that people love to keep open till the early morning hours. That leads me to vibe. What is the vibe of the all-inclusive resorts? So in my experience visiting all-inclusive resorts, and you know I've been to a lot, I visited over 50 in Mexico alone, um, you can have three kind of main vibes. You have very quiet. And what I mean by very quiet is this is a resort where there's not going to be music by the pool. There's not going to be big pool games happening. A great example is the picture on the right, which is LeBlanc Resort and Spa. This is a luxurious, wonderful, relaxing resort. We're laying around the pool and they're bringing me chilled cucumber slices for my eyes. Just absolutely wonderful, but very, very quiet. Then you have what I call active resorts. So this is maybe one of the pools will have some music throughout the day, maybe some afternoon games like pool volleyball or bingo or a trivia contest. A lot of groups tend to go there. So it's not all couples. You'll have you know, wedding groups or just birthday party groups. So it tends to be a little more active, a little more friendly, especially around the swim up bar. And then there's resorts that have a party vibe. That's like Breathless or Vieira Cancun. I encourage you to check out my video of that one to see what I mean about having a party. That's there's loud music at the pools. There's always something going on. Things go on till late in the evening. The other thing to keep in mind is, are there clothing optional areas? Now, there's some adults only resorts that are fully nude. There's also resorts, again, like Breathless Riviera Maya that has a topless pool. The couples resorts in Jamaica, several of them have clothing optional section of beach or couples tower aisle has an island that is mandatory nude. So just keep that in mind as you're checking all inclusive resorts. If that's something that you'd like to experience or something you definitely want to avoid, it's an important thing to keep in mind. Now room setup. 
This becomes really important if you're traveling in a group that isn't all couples. Many adults only resorts only have king beds. They basically say we are couples only. So sandals, couples are two examples of resort brands that really just want couples. And then even if they do have rooms with two beds, you have to be really careful about open bathrooms. I don't know why, but somewhere along the line, room decorators and architects decided that couples want to have totally open bathrooms where you can see into the shower, you can see into the toilet, the sinks are in the middle of the room. As you can see on the picture to the right here from LeBlanc, the bathtub jacuzzi is in the middle of the room. I I don't know. I don't love it. (laughs) actually. Um, But that is something to be really careful of if you are traveling in a group or it's two friends going for a trip that you may not want a totally open bathroom. Then the other piece is how private is your room generally? Are you in a beachfront room that is on a really active part of the beach? It's not going to be very relaxing to be on your patio as the pool volleyball game breaks out. So if you want true privacy, there's a few resorts that have some great options. So Sandals Resorts have a rendezvous room that basically you are within a fenced in area with your own rendezvous, which is kind of like a little hut, but it's a big luxurious hotel room. It doesn't have a view, but it's 100% private. Also, the Excellence Resorts have two story suites that have a plunge pool on the top. So again, you're high up. It'd be very difficult for anyone to see you. Room location. So you'll see different descriptions as you start to look at rooms. So garden view room usually means you're in the, towards the back of the resort. Your view is either blocked by a palm tree or foliage. You may even look over an air conditioner depending on the resort. Ocean view, and I put it in quotation marks, means somehow you can see part of the ocean. Some resorts are better at this than others. I think this is the number one reason I go to visit resorts is to see exactly what they're talking about when they say ocean view. It can be anything from you're looking over the pool out to the ocean to you have to stand on your tiptoes, turn your head 120 degrees, and then you might see a peak of the ocean. Now, ocean front is where it's at. This means you have a full view of the ocean. You are all the way beachfront. Um, so that you don't have to worry about playing any tricks. You have a beautiful view. But on the other side of that, speaking of privacy, you may want to consider that it's not going to be private. So if you're right on the beach, that means anyone who walks up and down the beach will likely be able to see you. Then lastly, our swim-up rooms. So on your right is an example of a swim-up room at Hyatt Valara Cancun. You can see that these rooms empty out into a shared pool. So that's I think it's four, four or five different suites all together share that pool. Swim up suites can also be that you connect to kind of a lazy river that goes and connects to a swim up bar like at El Dorado Royale. It could be that your patio goes to a patch of grass that then connects to a big common pool like at Excellence Resorts. So depending on the resort, the swim up room can look a little different. You can also find rooms with plunge pools. And what a plunge pool means is that you have your own private pool at your room. Now, if the resort has a preferred club, like Secrets Resorts have preferred clubs, Breathless Resorts have Exhale exhale Clubs, Excellence Resorts have Excellence Club, these are going to be the best room locations. So keep that in mind when you're making your choices. And last, Wi-Fi. Will you need Wi-Fi throughout the resort, in your room? Does it need to be fast? Do you need to stream? These are important considerations. More and more resorts are adding stronger Wi-Fi, but it's still not a standard across all all all-inclusive resorts. Be sure to put any questions you have in the comments. I am here to answer them. So why book with me? What can I do for you? I work for you, not a resort. I'm interested in making sure you're happy at the end of the day. It doesn't matter to me what resort you choose. My interest is making sure we find the best fit for what you're looking for so that your vacation is fantastic. I coach you through the different options. We go through these different questions. I help you weigh the pros and cons of different resorts. And frankly, you already paid for my help. Travel Agent Commission is built into virtually any all-inclusive package out there. 
You're going to pay the same if you book through Apple Vacations or FunJet Vacations as if you book through me, but you'll get my help. I mean, how great is that? Well, so let's take a look at what other things I'm going to be covering in my YouTube series and Facebook series. So next week is Disney Cruises. Then we're going to talk about Expedition Cruises of Canada and New England. May 8th is Vacation Like a TV Star. May 15th is Hawaii the Big Island. We're going to talk about cruising the Mediterranean, Bermuda, and Alaska Adventures. As always, if you're ready to book, schedule a time to chat, or you can always email me, Angie at TripsWithAngie.com. Thanks.